And we are recording. Okay. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda today? There are not. Uh, uh, I assume there are no conflicts of interest with the panel. I'll take their silence as agreement that there is no uh, conflicts of interest. Okay, on the agenda today is the review of 639 Rymel Road West. The lead planner on the file is Tim Bruman. Hope I got that uh, said that right, Tim. Uh, good afternoon. We're ready for your presentation. Please keep the presentation under 10 minutes. Thank you. And yes, you pronounced it fine. Uh, technically, Roman, but I accept Bruman, no problem. Just share the. Edward, I get a warning. Cannot share content unless I'm a presenter. I turned you here just a second. Should be good now. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Broman, senior planner with the development planning suburban team, and I'll be discussing the development proposal at 631 and 639 Rhyme Road West. The proposal is for a 12 story multiple dwelling with 165 multiple dwelling units, a mix of below grade and surface parking for a total of 198 parking spaces and direct vehicular access from Upper Paradise Road. Subject land is uh, located on the southeast corner of Armour Road West and Upper Paradise Road. Uh, currently has a vacant signature Dutch dwelling. Uh, to the north, uh, across Armour Road West, um, is an early childhood education uh, center, um, which was the former Union School, which is a property included on the city's register of property and cultural heritage value or interest. Um, and it has been identified as a uh, candidate for designation. Uh, to the east and south are single detached dwellings, and to the west is Upper Paradise Road and uh, single detached dwellings across the road as well. This is the view of the site from uh, the northwest corner of the intersection and towards the site. Sorry. And uh, moving further down further along Paradise Road, this is the view looking to the north. This is the view to the east along Rymo Road East. Uh, south along Upper Paradise Road and the west along Armour Road East. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there, um, the former Union School uh, is located uh, immediately to the north across the road. There is also a commercial plaza um, kitty corner of the site uh, on the northwest corner of the intersection. This is the proposed site plan for the property. Um, it is noted uh, that the development positions the building mass towards the streets and, and transitions the height and massing from that street edge to the lower profile uh, dwellings adjacent to the street. Um, however, staff have noted that the um, development proposes approximately half meter setback along both streets um, and the underground parkade uh, is also towards the all the, the limits of the property boundary along the entire perimeter. Um, so that they may present some compatibility issues uh, and limited opportunities for um, more robust landscaping along the uh, the site edges. Um, for the, the principal site entrance is located um, more into the interior of the site and should be located in a more prominent location along the street line. Uh, this is the view of the elevations. Um, this proposal does provide for a uh, well articulated bill form to emanate the street edge. However, um, some of the concerns that were identified is the application of the angular plane uh, commenced at 11 meters above grade as opposed to being at grade along the property line, um, which may result in some uh, encroachment issues um, in viewing the property to, uh, to the to the east, so the angle plane that would cut across the north elevation, as well as from the south, as shown here, it's there's sufficient setback, but confirming that angle plane doesn't wouldn't encroach uh, uh, with those upper stories along the uh, sorry the uh, 
the west elevation, the top of the upper floors. And also the interior of the the first floor is shown on the north elevation. Uh, this is an interior parking area located along this uh, this facade. Um, while this uh, the elevation drawing does indicate that the um, this wall provides significant glazing and articulation, uh, we would like to see more information on how this street edge would be animated. Moving on to the the policy context, it, it is located in the neighborhoods area of the Urban Hamilton Official Plan. Um, and it is in close proximity to the uh, the airport uh, employment growth uh, district lands uh, south of 20 and also to the uh, to the west uh, on Garner Road. Uh, and also for context, the, the there's some pockets that are not in the urban boundary that uh, are are shown on those edges as well. Um, and then moving on for the designation again, it's designated uh, neighborhoods. And so you can see there's a, a significant open space areas in the area, as well as some um, hydro corridors that are also located uh, uh, in the, around this neighborhood. Um, so the policy themes, uh, just just to highlight uh, this view, the neighborhoods does uh, uh, designation does support the um, complete communities. Uh, with a full range of residential dwelling types and densities, um, compact built form, mixed use, transit supportive, uh, those sorts of things, uh, and mul the multiple dwelling forms on the periphery of neighborhoods, um, safe convenient walking distance to community facilities. Uh, so, on all those, the proposal does meet the um, objectives of all of these policies. Uh, it is noted that the um, the net residential densities under the current policy framework uh, is a range of 100 to 200 dwelling units per hectare. Uh, an amendment to the official plan would be required to facilitate proposed development, which is part of the subject applications. Uh, the last point is regarding a transition from the high profile use to the adjacent low profile residential uses. Um, transitional features, as we were speaking to before, such as the application of the angular plane. And so in speaking to that, the urban design policies uh, speak to compatibility, enhancing the character of the uh, the neighborhood, uh, creating quality spaces, uh, and, uh, con continuous animated street edge, and minimizing the impact of, on neighboring buildings. And again, speaking to the transitions in scale, and ensuring uh, privacy, um, sunlight and shadow studies all are uh, considered. Uh, regarding zoning, it is currently zoned to uh, the B and C districts in the former Hamilton zoning bylaw. Uh, uh, these zones permit single attached dwellings. Uh, these zones, do, they don't permit multiple dwellings. Uh, and also they have a maximum height requirement of two and a half stories or 11 meters. Uh, so obviously a zoning bylaw amendment would be required to facilitate this development. Uh, moving on to the um, questions for the panel. Just, uh, since some areas we've discussed, uh, does the proposal represent compatible integration with the surrounding area in terms of uh, use, scale, form, and character? What is the relationship of the proposal with the height, massing, and scale nearby residential buildings? Does the proposal consider transition in height and density to adjacent residential buildings? Does the proposal include the provision of amenity space? And what is the relationship to existing patterns of private and public amenity space? And does the proposal create comfortable pedestrian environments by locating principal facades and primary building entrances parallel to and as close to the street as possible? Include ample glazing on ground floors to create visibility to and from the public sidewalk, including a quality landscape edge along frontages where buildings are set back from the street and using design techniques such as building step backs to maximize sunlight to pedestrian areas. This concludes my presentation and I look forward to any questions. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, it's turn of the applicant then, if they would uh, provide additional information as desired and 
and also keep the presentation under 10 minutes. So I will share my screen uh, now. Edward, it's not allowing me to share my screen only content. Second. Are you able to? Great, yes. I'll share my screen. Um, thank you, David, um, and thanks, Tim, for uh, your presentation. My name is Ashley Patton. Uh, I'm a, a registered professional planner with Bellsfields, and we are the planning consultants hired by Dicenzo Construction Company Limited uh, for this file. I will briefly go through um, the first few slides before passing it on to Wayne and Mark, and I will uh, try to skip over the parts that Tim already touched on in his presentation. Um, so, to, to not repeat anything Tim said, uh, this um, diagram uh, shows that this area is well served by a variety of schools, parks, uh, trails, places of worship included in the mixed area, mixed use area, uh, color and blue, includes a mix of daycares, retirement residences, and medical offices. There are also two bus routes that run in the immediate area along uh, Upper Paradise Road and Rymel Road with 15 minute headways. Uh, Rymel Road is also identified in the urban Hamilton official plan um, as being one of five potential rapid transit lines as part of the blast network. Um, there were two things that I wanted to touch on with respect to both the existing and the planned context. Uh, so we recognize that the immediate area is uh, existing uh, low rise residential dwellings, the broader area uh, for the site in particular along Rymel Road. There are a number of um, approved uh, and proposed development applications and newly constructed uh, that, that demonstrate this is an area in transition. And this includes uh, two recently constructed 10 story uh, apartment buildings at the intersection of Garth and Rymel, this red area at the southwest corner, along with an approved 12 story apartment building kind of at the left edge uh, near Raymond Road and Garner Road. And then as well as the village at St. Elizabeth Mills, which is at the southeast corner of Garth and Rymel, which uh, proposing is proposing a mix of uh, five and 12, a, a mix of residential and mixed use buildings between five and 12 stories. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, the next thing I wanted to just touch on uh, in terms of the planned context. So as, as Tim mentioned, this, uh, this area is designated neighborhoods, which permits low, medium, and high density residential uses based on a number of locational uh, criteria and particularly direct the medium and high density uses to the peripheries of the neighborhood, specifically uh, lots with frontage along arterials and collectors. Uh, so Upper Paradise is a collector road and Rymel Road is a major arterial. Uh, and Upper Paradise Road north of Rymel is a minor arterial. Uh, so you can see here the, the lots that front onto Rymel Road, particularly on the south, uh, have lot depths that range between 60 and 80 meters, which um, are ideal for, uh, you know, lot consolidation and, and, and intensification, particularly mid-rise form. So we recognize that the, the UHOP, the Urban Hamilton official plan, uh, permits kind of intensification um, in this area, and these, these sites are um, contemplated for intensification um, subject to a zoning bylaw amendment. As Tim mentioned, the zoning in this area uh, dates back to the uh, 1950s. Uh, so I won't touch on, Tim went through kind of the site images. Um, at a very high level, the text in this uh, brief uh, taken from our planning rationale um, demonstrates that the uh, proposed massing in the built form recognizes the contextual importance of the subject site being located uh, on a corner lot along a major arterial road and collector road um, and seeks to introduce a mid-rise building form uh, that is compatible with both the existing and planned urban context um, through the application uh, of step backs and angular planes um, the built form impacts uh, such as shadowing are limited uh, so i will pass it on to uh, mark and wayne if you want to just indicate to me when uh, to go to the next slide Somebody speaking, they're on mute. I, 
I think Wayne, you're on mute. There we go. Okay, so I'm Wayne Harrison, Kane YMH. Uh, basically, a lot of stuff has already been spoken about on this one here. So, uh, but basically, what we're dealing with is scale, granularity, things like that. So, basically, for this one here, what we've done is tried to keep sort of a, a base that you can see at the bottom there. Now, the base was an interesting part because because the land is rising. Uh, from south, which is at the left side of the page, uh, sorry, from north upside of the page to the south, there was really only sort of two bases. So one base that's uh, sort of the heavier material is sort of the, the one two-story portion there you're seeing on the right, but the north side of the building and heading more towards the east is, uh, is a lower level down. So that base we've actually split and taken that one as sort of a, um, so we're more compatible with with those dwellings to to the east. So it's really a split, Base, we'll call it on this one here because that way we're dealing with the two streets uh, simultaneously. Uh, with the base obviously going with the heavier materials, trying to keep a uh, relatively close granularity, uh, not, not something big and urban, but to keep it sort of uh, a closer spacing. And then up above that is really taking sort of the, the, the building and in truth, all of the angular plane and the, the shadows and all that really helps by get doing all the stepping. And then once you do the stepping, to, it really creates more of a, a breakdown of the building. So it's, you're not seeing a big heavy mass. And then from that, we've used uh, basically glass because we want to make the building appear lighter on top of the base, sort of uh, make it disappear a little bit up into the sky. Um, now the entrance, if you go to the other uh, rendering, the, the entrance we've located at the uh, at the south end, and that way it has got more of an access from both a pedestrian, which is sort of the left of the sidewalk, and the right, which is sort of your the heat people coming in off of their vehicles and things like that. And it, it seems to work best for at this location, because that way you can you can satisfy both of those. Um, and uh, the the other part we, that we did on this was uh, that. There's a, we've left a fairly wide distance between the south end of the building. Maybe if you go just to the next slide, or it might be the slide between the two. There it is there. You can see to the south, there's a quite, quite a large distance there before we get to the buildings uh, to, to the south, and uh, which, which sort of just gives an open break there. Uh, the rest of it is usually, as opposed to changing from typologies, from, you know, for, from uh, apartment to mid-rise to dwelling, we've done it by instead by using sort of a stepping of the building technique to, 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 bring, to bring the massing down from uh, you know, both north, south, east, and west. Uh, Mark, is there anything you wish to add to that? I think you covered everything, Wayne, just a few, Beautiful. just because there was a comment on the entrance. I just want to, if you can go back to the previous rendering, Ashley. We do, we do recognize that the entrance isn't necessarily facing uh, paradise for the the doors themselves, um, which is basically just because of a grading um, kind of battle that we have. Say so we try to do as much of a feature on paradise that wraps the corner um, to kind of wrap around and bring people to that entrance. Um, that's just our, our reasoning there for that. But I think everybody has covered everything else. Yes. Uh, the only thing I should mention is that uh, we are going to have underground parking beneath the entire site, obviously, to keep as much under parking underground as possible and to leave landscape above. And of course, we would be putting sufficient soil depths on top for whatever is required for the type of vegetation that's being put up there. That's all I have. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to the first panelist for any questions. Uh, Yana? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, you choose to start measuring the angular plane from 11 meters above the ground. Just to clarify that, I think you broke up a bit at the beginning of your question, Yana. So she, I think the question is about why are you starting to measure the granular or the angular plane from 11 meters at the property line rather than right at the, the intersection of the property line and the ground? And I, I can answer that. Um, in terms of um, other examples throughout the city, the the city does not have a, a standard um, application of the angular plane. They've accepted on it in a variety of different circumstances, dif the, whether you measure it at 11 or not. Um, it it really the city has accepted it um, as more of a principle um, of an application of an angular plane versus a hard and fast line. Um, to be measured and more so just a principle of transition. Okay. Okay. 
And the other one was, uh, if there are any sustainable design features proposed. Wayne, did you want to answer that? Wayne or Mark? Okay, so as far as the sustainable design features, well, actually the building code is is catching up as fast as we can go with uh, the, the energy efficiencies are going up every year. I'm sure you already know that uh, requirements are going up every year and obviously we've got to keep up with whatever is, is required. Um, as far as sustainable, I'm gonna have to leave that to, to, to the owner as, as the uh, process goes along as to which what which the particular pieces they wish to incorporate? Okay, yep. thank you. Uh, Oda, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you. I don't have any question at this time. Um, Ted. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> got a couple questions that maybe relate to, or maybe is uh, uh, for the city. Um, the first is: is there I, I see reference to road widening. Is there any anticipated road widening that we should be aware of on Rymel Road? And then the second one is, um, it, it's been a bit of a challenge to reconcile a 12-story building with the residential that's in this location. And is there a larger plan that's been proposed for this area that we should understand as part of the framework for this development? This is a question to the city, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't know, Tim, if you can take it. Is there anybody there from the city that's able to uh, talk to this? Tim, if you were talking, you were on uh, mute. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Sorry about that. So you, you say yes. Uh, Rymo Road, um, Rymo West is identified as a uh, major arterial. Uh, so road widening would be required. Uh, that would be addressed at the site plan stage. Uh, sufficient road widening requirement has been identified on the the site plan uh, uh, as submitted. So as as it demonstrates, so the the ultimate uh, property boundary. The limits the building would be set back uh, as much before approximately half a meter from from the the future uh, road. Um, as a right away dedication, so it is a major arterial. Whether a future improvements to run the road as it becomes a, um, uh, it is identified on the blast our blast network, which is our uh, high transit higher order transit corridor. Um, so in the future, it uh, is vision for. Possible enhancements uh, regarding that or future transportation needs for that same quarter. Um, and sorry, uh, could could you repeat the second part of your question? The, the second question was: Is there a, a a framework of planning framework for this area of Hamilton? Um, uh, it you know it's zoned as two stories currently, and there's a proposal for twelve stories. And is there a long term uh, any uh, well, it can be referenced back to the overall master plan. Is there any specific secondary or thought put into this part of Hamilton? The, this this neighborhood, uh, it doesn't have any secondary plan applicable to it. So the policies that were identified uh, for volume one of the urban Hamilton official plan are applicable. Um, being a, that it is along um, it, all along the periphery of the neighborhood, along in um, major arterial roadway, it is supportive of uh, higher density uh, development and some higher built forms. Um, and the criteria that we need to meet is um, to ensure that uh, compatibility and transition to the adjacent uh, developments. Um, as for a neighborhood plan, it is part of a um, a neighborhood plan. Um, that's more of a policy document. I would recognize the the current built form and hasn't hasn't really identified future land uses that would be considered through development applications such as this one. Okay, thank you very much. That's those are my questions. Eldon. Uh, thank you. Um, some of my questions were asked. My one question um, I was wondering is. Um, 
whether there have been any contemplation through your design process and considering the proposal of providing more than just one level of underground parking. Wayne, did you want to answer that? I know you've we've it's been a process to dealing with the grades on this. I know we've been through a number of of iterations, but Wayne, did you want to? Sure, sure. No, I can, I can answer that one. So uh, basically, um, the, the Hamilton Mountain has got some, uh, we'll say, pretty hard rock, <laughs> and uh, it, it's not really the t stuff that you want to be going too deep through, and especially also with. Um, a lot of the stormwater management issues that are going on right now, uh, going deep undergrounds is is sort of we'll say problematic. Uh, it's something which more and more the developers are trying to avoid doing, uh, just because of you know, the, the the type of ground you're dealing with and the type of waters that that are that is being encountered. And sort of follow up question for clarity: What's the depth before you get to? Is that the case here? And what's the depth that you get to before you hit bedrock? Uh, well, pretty, pretty, t uh, typically but the, but the problem with the mountain is actually you're getting, uh, water depths, uh, I'll just give you a, a couple of other locations around, uh, we had one earlier today and the water depth was about two and a half meters down. Um, so the water is, is, is obviously a big one because then you're getting all kinds of you know, lateral pressures, long-term risks, and uh, risk is not something which is a, a good thing, right? Um, what what rock can be done into, it's just the, the cost that you're getting into. Typically finding rock sort of in the, uh, you're a little farther away from the brow here, I would expect you're probably in around the two and a half to three meters. Okay, thank you. Uh, but, but sorry, I should phrase that. This is also on a on a slope of a hill, like we're dropping almost a, a story from front to back. So it's you know, this is a particularly difficult one. Yeah. Um, I, I take it that's it, Eldon. Uh, Dana. Yeah, I just have one question that wasn't answered. Is your intention that you're providing a unit or a terrace for or a terrace uh, or a balcony for every unit? Mark, I believe that's every unit, correct? Yes, that's the intent. Uh, Thanks. Jennifer. Yeah. Thanks, David. Um, I have one question that, um, about density, as, as Ted uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, so, Tim, you mentioned a, a, a benchmark uh, comparison of of a ruling that was 100 to 200 dwelling units per hectare. And is that because this is along an arterial roadway that permits higher density? So that, that's a question for you, Tim. And then, and then a question for the developers, um, what density per hectare is this? So that we have a, a way to measure um, uh, appropriate um, intensification here. You may not have those stats on your head, but um, I think they'd be very useful in the discussion. You can note that the proposed density is 424 units per hectare. Thank you. Um, so, um, and then Tim, can you clarify is, is 100 to 200 the range at which is permitted in an arterial roadway? Yeah, so the that 100 to 200 units per hectare is the what well, applies to the neighborhoods area. So when you look at in neighborhoods, uh, okay. Yeah, so when you look at that map, the the entire city, the yellow area, um, that's for the high density residential, and then there's locational criteria. So high density residential is uh, targeted towards preferred neighborhoods along major roads. So, um, so yeah, so essentially this site uh, meets that criteria to, that it is a candidate site for high density residential. The target is 100 to 200 under the, the current framework. Right. Okay. Um, and then just with as a additional context, as part of our municipal comprehensive review, further revisions to those density targets uh, ranges are um, there's there's added flexibility going through mm -hmm. the you know, municipal comprehensive review and the uh, official plan updates that are uh, currently in progress. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm going to pass on any questions myself, and I'll turn it over to the first panelist for commentary, uh, Yana. So, 
sorry about that. Always. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I really like that you are creating a build form that is wrapping the corner and also that it attempts to transition toward the single detached forms. I think, though, that the proposed massing and height are extremely excessive for this context, and I would suggest lowering the heights and also redistributing the massing better way not to create such an overwhelming structure for this neighborhood, but try to fit within the surroundings better and also to provide some buffer toward uh, your neighbors. I know you are using the argument uh, of available public transit for the significant increase of density on this side. And that means that you're anticipating a use of uh, public transit by these residents. So it doesn't seem that a well taught pedestrian environment for these users is provided. Uh, the ground floor along Rhino is basically a tall blank wall of the underground parking structure sticking out and with the glazed or spandrel wall of parking structure above ground that really should be significantly revised with truly that great active uses around the whole street frontage to me this site has a great uh, potential for some increased density although i would strongly encourage you to follow the city's direction and their current framework but so far it doesn't seem that the proposal is having much regard for the existing context or, or offering anything to the existing community. Um, no community uses or spaces, no pedestrian oriented amenities and environment. And I think that a design which is more friendly toward the existing community would be really desirable at this corner. I won't go into any more detail, but I really think these are my major uh, concerns. I mean, we should really look into uh, trying to provide something for the community uh, you are intensifying. Thank you. Uh, Hoda. Yes, thank you, David. And uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I uh, agree with my colleague, Yana, about the uh, having the uh, high rise building for the future development that is happening in this neighborhood. But uh, still, I believe that the relationship with this proposal with the neighborhood is not enough, neither for now nor for the future. For now, okay, there are all um, residential neighborhoods and what they want. They need to be more related with this new development that could be achieved by more pedestrian friendly and maybe mixed use in the ground level to encourage them that, okay, yeah, this is adding something to this neighborhood and nor for future. So for future, as Yana mentioned, we want people to use the public transport to have a, for residents and also for pedestrians who are passing beside this, uh, walking beside this building. This building is not inviting and welcoming the residents and also it's so close at both sides uh, toward the main uh, corridor and it's not animating the street at all. So I suggesting, highly suggesting to instead of, I know it could be some financial reason of uh, having the uh, garage under uh, on top of the ground, but uh, the neighborhood now and in future, they need to be connected and have more animated relationship between the building and the neighborhood. And also more closely uh, looking what the residents might need is more uh, amenity spaces and the entrance that is more hidden in the back. I really think that that would be great to have the entrance on ground level at the side of Rymal, maybe at that uh, corner of the intersection. That would be so nice a spot to have entrance, but it needs lots of uh, effort. I know that's not easy, but I highly recommend to uh, have these comments in your mind for the future uh, okay. development. Thank you. Thank you, Hoda. Uh, Ted? Okay, thank you for your 
presentation. Um, I'm going to reiterate some of the comments you've just heard um, uh, by Yana and Hoda, particularly Yana's comments about the dense density of the, and the height of this project. Um, and I, I think we're all uh, support densification on this site. It makes a lot of sense for the future. I think the question is really how 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 high and how dense um, should this be? What's appropriate? Um, and it feels like 12 story um, is really stretching to optimize the zoning envelope and, and the, the building really is just, you know, responding to that as a as a as a means to achieve uh, maximum density um, and it, it it feels like it could relax a bit uh, six to eight stories would feel I think um, you know the we've been asked the question how does it relate in transition to the existing neighborhood and six to eight stories to me feels like an appropriate amount of density um, in terms of the way the 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 project relates to its site I think the the planning generally you know makes a lot of sense uh, but at grade it does feel very fortified. So along Paradise and, and Rymel Road, there's really no pedestrian accidents. There's no landscape uh, features or um, engagement with the building. And you really need to come all the way around into the backside. So it's not creating a pedestrian uh, space uh, or connecting to the intersection in a way that if you imagine 20, 30 years from now, Rymel Road becoming more uh, commercial, more more dense, more developed. Um, I think the building wants to anticipate that. The corner feature, um, you know, it's a it's a bold feature on the corner, uh, large faceted space that could be, um, as per Hoda's comment, could be entrance, could be an amenity space, could be exterior terrace. It could have, I think, some kind of feature, some kind of character identity uh would be um really helpful in that location if you could pedestrians move from the intersection to that space i think that also would be um a, 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 an added value um i i i also think that uh both on paradise and rymel road that the the challenge of having the the uh, parking come right to the facade um, could be remedied by an approach with townhomes um, on on both sides. Those are walkout townhomes that could, uh, you know, connect to the sidewalk, connect to the street with a more um, residential landscape condition happening throughout there to give it uh, a sense of scale that's um, appropriate to to the neighborhood. Uh, I feel the entrance as well is very constrained. Um, while it's great to have the accessible parking immediately there, it feels like that could be an amenity outdoor space that could um, uh, be more generous uh, in spirit. And generally, you know, there is a challenge here with parking. The parking at surfaces um, and within the building is really pushed to the envelope and there's very little green space or amenity space that's being offered back to the community, back to the residents um, uh, for all of this density. So if density and height is really the goal, then that should be um, delivered with a really a liberal um, and and high quality public realm and amenity offering to the community, I would say. Um, and then finally, with the architectural language, and I appreciate the explanation about how the podium levels are, you know, turning the corner and, and navigating that grade. I think the challenge is the, the three story massing of the brick and that podium tends to feel like it's just being applied to one side and i think there might want to be some more continuity there um and the the formal language i think is um quite not understanding the systems there so i think that could also use some some thinking in terms of how those systems are the hierarchy of those systems okay thank you uh eldon Uh, thanks for your presentation. Um, I echo a lot of the comments that were shared by my fellow colleagues. Um, I think for me, and then looking at this proposal, it's um, the principle of intensification and, and even the height itself. Um, I think that there is um, there is merit for that within this area. 
I think the issue is how it is deployed and how you are getting to this ultimate height and density on the site. And when I look at the way in which the plan's laid out, um, it's it seems as if it's how do we get how much as much density as we can on the site, and everything else is an afterthought. Um, you, you look at the dog run at the back, um, it's kind of tucked away at the back and what would typically be a landscape buffer um, that would be planted. So you've removed that opportunity for uh, a transition buffer between the lines to the south. Um, when you look at the frontage along Rymel, you know, the decision as it relates to having park, parking within that space um, removes the animation that could have been part of that relationship along the public realm. Even the way in which I know you noted that every unit would have um, an amenity space or, or a balcony space, it looks like the ground floor units wouldn't. Um, so either you're taking away from the unit floor area in order to carve out a balcony or um, those ground floor units don't. So it, it seems like there are a lot of compromises that have been made in order to achieve a certain height and density, whereas um, more compatibility and fit uh, within this neighborhood could be achieved. Um, by perhaps reducing some of this height, uh, reducing some of the units um, to uh, re to better utilize the built form, um, better arrange parking, provide for more on-site landscaping, uh, provide for more elements that that promote a more harmonious fit within the neighborhood. Um, I think that's the issue that um, I think more, many of my colleagues have reflected in different ways, and I'm reflecting in a different way as well. But I think it comes to you're squeezing a lot on this property. Those are my comments. Thank you. Uh, Dana? Yeah, and so like um, Alden and like some of my colleagues said, I'm really um, not afraid of density and um, a mass similar to what you propose on the upper end of the scale. But if you want to have a form that's emblematic of like an, an urban um, size scale um, development, I think that you really need to kind of strengthen the response of the, the ground floor and the podium and to really create that animated uh, street edge. And I recognize that your grade is really challenging with uh, the slope, but I think there's opportunity to um, dig deeper with the parking garage and really have, whether it's walkout units, whether it's more terraces, um, whether you can have kind of something at the corner that really like relates to the neighborhood to really strengthen that relationship with the community, but also with the street and people that are walking um, along there. Specifically, as this area matures and becomes more of a destination, then that's already built in and designed in with this building. Um, my second comment is around outdoor amenity. Uh, you have some shown on the second floor. I think there is an opportunity there to um, strengthen that, whether it be removing some of the parking. I notice you have more than one per unit. Um, switching the, the loading dock and the ramp and providing some uh, outdoor amenity as a future or as part of this proposal um, on the ground level and maybe eliminating some parking spaces to gain that. And alternatively, or sorry, in addition, um, I noticed your bike storage area was on the other side of the garbage room. Just that could be considered to be switched uh, to provide easier access to the bike storage on the elevator and then to avoid having to kind of walk through the loading space to get to the bike storage. Uh, that's everything. Uh, Jennifer. Thanks everyone. I, I won't repeat many of the comments from my colleagues here. I, I think we struggle with finding the right amount of den density that, that is right for this intensification. Um, using the, the the rules of the angular plane result in a form that maxes maximizes density, but in the end, it, it won't create a consistent and strong and vibrant urban edge along Rymel Road. We'd, we'd end up with a, a, a mismatch of, of zoning as all those single story uh, buildings get redeveloped. So I think a long term plan, as mentioned earlier, um, is really needed. Um, and I, I think if, if you're not eroding at, at in, in angular planes, then there'd be an opportunity to, to make a more solid uh, base. Um, 
I want to echo Ted's comments about clarity and language. Uh, I think that, you know, there's an effort to break down the massing and smaller components to, to make it more humane, to break down the massing and be less, less oppressive on the street. But I think it's, it's broken down too much and resulted in, uh, a, a, a lack of clarity or hierarchy or, you know, just a consistent architectural expression. Those are my comments. Thanks. Thank you. Um. For the most part, I really feel everything that I would be saying has already been said. I share the concern with the essential, the ground plane development, that the attitude towards the street and uh, the public realm is not really delivering on for a project of this scale, and for the ambition of uh, you know some kind of transformational attitude that it brings to the development in this area. Uh, I share the concern that the height is probably excessive. Uh, as certainly, it's like an ad hoc uh, approach that seems to be being developed along uh, Rymel, and and maybe uh, we are as a panel kind of looking to the city as if there isn't uh, maybe some, a need for some kind of more uh, clear structure in terms of where that where that road wants to go, like uh, some of the kinds of documents we've seen in other jurisdictions where like in Toronto, there's the avenues or, or a program that defines a proposal for the street section and that we would be, you know, advise, you know, commenting on proposals in light of that kind of proposal in a way we, I feel that, uh, it's a little hard for us to, other than, you know, to some degree, personal opinion, uh, your decision to go with something that's much larger than the, the units per hectare and also sort of using an interpretation of the, the uh, angular plane that's, I'd say, you know, interpreting it in a kind of a extra height way. Both of those, they, as well as just the general context are ones that are suggesting, uh, you know, a site that's much higher developed than I think. We would recommend we look through all the staff questions and I think in general, they're, they're almost self answering, you know, does it can, you know, in terms of the surrounding. Uh, character form and scale, uh, all of these things, I mean, we would have to probably, and we have in some ways responded somewhat negatively to that said, uh, I think that the spirit that you're, you know, exploring the, you know, the idea of the massing and some strategies, I think are worth pursuing. I, I kind of echo what uh, Jennifer and, and Ted said that. I'm not sure you've quite hit the mark on the on the building composition and, and mass. Maybe it is a bit too frantic and and uh, complicated and uh, and maybe uh, the other thing I, I do feel that right now the section through the site that the slope that it has is seen as a negative to the site and you're kind of having to live with it in the solution and it's creating some problems uh, for the site and I, I think maybe. A different approach has to be considered one that does bring, uh, you know, changes the, the, the ground plane within the overall building and brings it down to the rhymal level. So you have to somehow step that ground floor plan to create appropriate relationship and, and maybe even see if there isn't a way where the section works to your advantage as opposed to being something that you're battling against. Um, I don't know enough about the city, like it would seem to me you might even try and drive through an entrance off Rymel at the lower level that that would in some cases make it easier to make your parking uh, work. I know that it's relatively close to the corner and there might be other challenges. Um, I don't have anything else to say and unfortunately I do have to run to another meeting. So I'm, I'm hoping there are no questions for clarification, but uh, I will depart myself, but maybe Jennifer Mahler can act in my behalf uh, because I have to uh, go to another meeting. Sure, that's fine, David. Thank you. I actually need to excuse myself too. I have also another meeting to go to. Thank you very much. Bye. I don't I don't have any questions. Mark, um, Alan, Vienna, I appreciate everyone's um, thoughtful comments and responses and we'll uh, definitely be be discussing them, um, but I had no questions on my end. No more questions from the applicants. Yeah. Comments. 
Doesn't look like it. Okay. So thank you to everyone and I this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you.